Hello ladies and mostly gentlemen, my name is David K. Martin and you are now listening to the Maple Leaf Wrestling History Podcast, the world's first true north wrestling podcast. And because this show is powered by Red Circle, I want to offer you fine folks the opportunity to have your demands fulfilled in audio form. So as I make my way through history unearthing various facts, stats, feds, and matches, I want to lay it down for you guys like this. If you donate any sum of money to this show, literally anything, I will do a show on any Canadian related subject matter of discussion you want to hear. So if you aren't feeling what I have to say right Right now or you want to skip ahead of the timelines or perhaps you would either prefer a character bio or a specific match or show review done you want a book review done you want me to review a benoit omega or phil lafon match in japan fuck it done all this and more could be yours at maple leaf wrestling history remember all donations are measured equally in god's eyes and you can find the show on youtube or any of your podcast gimmicks now back to our regularly scheduled program Hey everybody, it's Sam with Wrestling Overtime with your news and updates for up to July 22nd, 2020. I want to thank uh, Wrestling Observer for giving a lot of these updates. Uh, also, uh, PW Insider and Fightful and Fightful Select and uh, Ringside News. Because I get a lot of my information from them. Uh, they have a lot more contacts, obviously, than I do. Um, let's start off with Jeff Hardy and Sheamus's barroom ball, brawl should be happening on this Friday SmackDown, uh, which would be July 24th. I guess tomorrow night, depending on when you are listening to this. Um, this was supposed to be a match that was going to be at Extreme Rules. They decided that the card was a little too full, and they had a little much, too much going on, so they decided to go ahead and just move it to SmackDown on the 24th. So, should be interesting to see a bar room brawl. Kind of interested to see if anyone else gets involved in what exactly happens. MVP also talked to Talk Sport uh, last weekend about creating a stable. We all know that that's in the cards, and he said absolutely he was trying to. Um, he's trying to recruit different players to be part of a stable, and he kept telling them to watch me work. And so, MVP, we are going to watch you work because it is hard to tell what you're going to end up doing. For those of you who have not checked out um, WWE's YouTube channel recently, they uploaded the start of the Women's Evolution playlist. They're going to be adding different women's matches that change the game. Um on there the rest of the month and they uploaded Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch versus Baron Corbin and Lacey Evans from Extreme Rules 2019. Now we just had uh, Extreme Rules 2020. Think about that. Think about how much characters have changed. We had uh, Baron Corbin as a bad guy. Of course, he still is a heel. He is king of the ring. He hasn't really changed much. But his partner, Lacey Evans, was a heel and calling everybody nasty. And um, she's now a babyface. Or a semi-babyface. Since she's been going up against, you know, Sasha and, and Bailey, And been calling them nasty. So I'm actually shocked she didn't call Baron Corbin a nasty. But she is kind of flipped her character around within a year. But then when you go on the babyface side of things, um, you've got Seth Rollins. He has totally changed his character around. The crowd kind of didn't take to his play of a babyface, so it really got to him with all the different tw Twitter wars that Seth got into. Seth is now the leading heel or one of, I, I would say, probably the leading heel on Raw. He is now the Monday Night Messiah, where he is trying to teach people the right way of doing things by putting their eyes out. And Becky Lynch is gone. She's pregnant and uh, looking forward to having a baby, hopefully, you know, in the next six months or so. And 
then coming back. So a lot changed just in these four in this one match. So that's what you're going to hear in the next couple episodes. Um, I'm going to take the month of July, kind of talk a little bit about what happened in each promotion in the month of July, and then next week I'm going to talk about what happened in the month of, um, or excuse me, the next episodes are going to talk about what happened in the month of June. And then um, next week I'm going to take and talk about what has happened in the month of July and kind of do a little bit of a recap for you guys so that you can see how different promotions are working through the weeks um, at what they're trying to do and this, how the storylines are progressing or are not being progressed. Uh, some storylines just kind of fall by the wayside, never maybe to be picked up again. I mean, look at the SmackDown Mystery Hacker. That storyline has gone, I don't know, it went up in smoke? Maybe it got lost in the Wyatt Swamp. I, I don't know. It's It's gone or something. Um, Matt Cardona. Otherwise known as Zack Ryder, unveiled his new internet belt and his new interest, entrance theme, which is called When the Lights Go Down by Downstreet. Um, you guys need to be keeping up with um, Matt Cardona on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. He is really revealing stuff, and I look for him soon to reveal where he'll be wrestling next, especially with him, you know, debuting an entrance theme. Last Saturday, Ring of Honor's YouTube channel had a panel. It's still up. Uh, and what they did was they gathered numerous res wrestlers that were on their roster, set them down, and they had a panel discussion about Black Lives Matter, police brutality, and race. And it was an interesting conversation between them. And if you've got a little bit of time, go to Ring of Honor's uh, YouTube channel. The wrestlers they had on there were uh, Shane Taylor, Caprice Coleman, Jay Lethal, Jonathan Gresham, and then Kenny King. And like I said, it was an interesting discussion that they had. Uh, it was also announced earlier this week that AEW's Austin Gunn is officially cleared to wrestle now after tearing his PCL in his left knee. Uh, a lot of people had been writing on his Twitter, on AEW's Twitter, about the gun show and why was Billy wrestling? Why is Austin not jumping in to help Billy? Why is he not getting involved? Why is he not wrestling? Well, in the very first match, he t tore this PCL in his left knee and he's been rehabbing ever since. So I look for us to start seeing him getting some action on AEW Dark fairly soon. Um, AEW's Jock Evans also tweeted about AEW. And it was really interesting to me because this week we saw, well, I guess it started this weekend. We saw a lot of the WWE wrestlers that lost their jobs on, you know, Black Wednesday actually find work on Impact Wrestling at Slammiversary or on Impact Wrestling show on Tuesday night. And they were let go supposedly because of COVID-19 and uh, Vince McMahon and WWE couldn't afford to keep them around and couldn't take care of them and on and on and on and on. Well, this is the opposite of that. AEW's Jack Evans tweeted out that AEW has taken great care of him. They have continued to pay him even though he's only wrestled like one-fourth of the time uh, in this entire year. Since um, 
COVID-19 stopped him from coming to the shows. He's, he was trapped in the travel ban and everything. AEW and Tony Khan said, don't worry about it. It's okay. Take care of your family. Take care of yourself. Stay away. Stay safe. We'll pay you. And when this is over, when you, you know, the travel ban, you're allowed to come back. Then come back and enjoy yourself. But um, he asked, could he start sending in some promos? Could he could he tape anything in, in any way, shape, or form? And you've seen those. Uh, he has been sending in, you know, different programs or promos to keep a... I guess to keep the fans of AEW to know that that he's out there and that he wants to be with them and, and to kind of keep in, you know, their mind. Uh, Wayne Storm posted on Sunday that he isn't with the WWE anymore. He even said that he was unemployed for the first time since 1994. Um, this is the same landstorm that shut his wrestling school down to take a job with WWE and they furloughed him and then never brought him back and just have let him go. So he's, he's no longer with WWE and he's looking for work. And I saw on a lot of the message boards, oh, AEW needs to pick him up. Well, you know, no, I don't think they do. I don't think, number one, they need to pick up everybody that loses their job. But number two, I don't know that Lance Storm's beliefs, his philosophies, how he wrestles, how he thinks about wrestling, I don't know that that necessarily fits in with the AEW style of things. I don't know that he fits in with Iron Anderson and Tolly Blanchard and Dean Malenko, and, and some of those guys that they've already got. However, he is pretty close and, you know, decent friends with Don Callis. So I can see uh, Lance Storm going to Impact Wrestling or, you know, have something to do with New Japan Wrestling in the coming future. It was also announced that WWE's formerly known as No Way Jose will be using the name Levy Valez. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, so if you see that name uh, popping up on the independent circles or, you know, in any of the major pr promotions, that that is no way, Jose. It's my understanding that Kyra Sane has wrestled her last match in WWE you all know that earlier this year, I guess it was uh, January, February, she went back to Japan in order to get married. And while she was in the process of getting married, going on her honeymoon, she got caught up in COVID-19 and the travel ban. And it was shut down. She couldn't get back over. And that was when Asuka did not have a tag team partner. And she was showing up on every show, coming and going, and being a teetotal workhorse. Um, but Kyrie has come back. She just hasn't been happy. Her husband didn't come back with her. And she just wants to go back to Japan and enjoy her newly married life. And so it's my understanding she has wrestled her last match for WWE. We got to see uh, Mustafa Ali return on Monday Night's Raw. Um, he was Ricochet and Cedric Alexander's six-man partner. They ended up um, getting the win over MVP and Lashley and Shelton Benjamin. But I guess my question is, how long is this going to last? I mean... Sit down and think about it. Really, how long is it going to last before they start burying him? I mean, they buried him so far under that we haven't seen him in months. And now he's partnered with Ricochet, who, for some unknown reason, has really 
made someone mad somehow, some way, and isn't getting pushed at all anymore. So, really, how long is this Mustafa Ali thing going to last? Now, it was announced on Monday Night's Raw also that next week it will be Asuka versus Sasha Banks since their match at Extreme Rules on Sunday ended with basically a crazy type finish with Bailey ending up putting on a referee shirt. Um, it is going to be the belt can be transferred any way, shape, or form. And Stephanie McMahon announced that and uh, made sure that everybody knew that. Also, next week, we're going to have another Extreme Rules rematch. What is up with, you know, rematch after rematch after rematch? But we're going to get Drew and Dolph again. Only this time, uh, Drew is going to pick the stipulation of the match. Oh boy, oh boy, I cannot wait. Because, you know, the Drew and Dolph match was so great at Extreme Rules that I forgot to even go over it in the Extreme Rules Raves and Rants episode that I did. Because, basically, Drew claymored him, and that was it. So, is this rematch going to be any different? Well, it shouldn't. They're, they're making Drew into a bonafide star. They're making him into this monster that has this unbelievable finisher. So, you know, it should go the exact same way. Of course, knowing WWE, it won't. And somehow, possibly, Dolph will, according to the stipulation, may end up beating him. Uh, that would not surprise me, not one bit, for WWE to pull a screw job like that. Now, Tota Bellas, I know that um, a lot of you watch that. I know a lot of you don't, and you're very vocal. Um, because, you know, last week's news and updates, I talked about the Bella Twins signing a new contract um, with a new agent with Michael Strahan. And uh, for some reason, you guys don't like the poor Bellas. But anyway, Tota Bellas basically finished up filming um, in July. Now, when COVID hit, they had to go from 14 cameramen down to six. And they kind of finished it up, like I said, in July. But the twins had not had the babies yet. So two crew members actually agreed to stay away from their families and they are doing social isolation so that they can be around the twins while they're pregnant. Um, and they are helping film what is leading up to the birth of the babies. Now, they cannot be in the delivery room. So they had to get Daniel Bryan and Artem to agree to film some um, in the, the delivery room and in the hospital room afterwards and both of them agreed so that they can get some footage of that obviously they're wanting footage of the babies but um that's the latest you know update on total bellas then we saw sheldon benjamin um he won the 24 7 belt from our truth so how is our truth going to get it back i know that they're it's probably a team of creative. They've probably got seven people sitting over in the corner arguing on how they're going to have our truth get that bell back because, you know, he's got to hold that bell at least a hundred times before he um, retires. And I think he's on uh, 39 now. So I'm sure they're trying to figure out some way that he can get that bell back. The latest edition of Ring of Honor or R-O-H, um, but the latest edition of Ring of Honor, week by week, Brody King announced he is leaving Villain Enterprises. So that kind of 
popped my interest. I was like, oh, really? He's leaving Marty. He's leaving Flip. So I'm kind of wondering how that's going to play out and why he chose to announce it on week by week instead of, you know, when they come back and actually start doing shows again. Of course, I think all of you heard uh, the Motor City Machine Guns defeated the North on Tuesday night's Impact Wrestling show. Um, we talked about that in, you know, the Impact Wrestling Slammiversary Raves and Rants episode that we did. That this was really fast, um, them introducing them and beating the rascals and then just jumping up to the number one contender and automatically, boom, taking on the North. And then they decided for, to make them champions. So the North had had the belts for 383 days. So I, I personally thought it was a little bit of a shock. And like I said, a little quick, but... You know, who am I to say, um, they'll probably, like I said, have a really good title run. Um, like I told you guys on the Slammiversary episode, I really look for Motor City and the Good Brothers to take over that tag team division and really give it some veteran leadership presence. We also saw Brian Myers, who used to be in WWE, Kurt Hawkins. He appeared on Tuesday night. Um, a lot of people didn't recognize him. I was shocked about that. I, I kind of thought he looked, you know, kind of the same. Um, he is going by his real name, Brian Myers, in Impact. But uh, when I got on the internet and, and read it in different Facebook groups and stuff, you could see that a lot of people were like, who's that? Who's that? You know? What's he doing? Where's he from? And when they were they told, hey, that's Kurt Hawkins. He's from WWE. They really didn't believe it. So um, that was just an interesting turn of events. Bad news. Um, I guess it was, well, it was the beginning of Wednesday, I guess. Chris Jericho had to announce that this year's Chris Jericho Cruise has been canceled and it has been postponed until October of 2021. I didn't read through all of the announcements and stuff, but it is my understanding that if you have tickets to the one in 2020, that they will be valid for the one in 2021, which logically in my head which we all know that that may or may not be right but logically in my head would mean that the Chris Jericho cruise for 2021 is already sold out but you know we'll see we'll see how many people give up their tickets uh due to COVID-19 they don't want to take any more cruises or anything like that so so we'll see about that now of course, on Wednesday night, last night, uh, NWA's Eddie Kingston. Now, he's also been in Ring of Honor. He's been in Impact Wrestling. And then, like I said, he was last in NWA. He was the independent wrestler that showed up last night to take Cody's Open Challenge. Now, the difference is he said he wanted no disqualification. He wanted an ODQ match. And um, Cody was like, okay. And I wanted to hold my head and go, Cody, 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 what are you thinking? And I think I, I found out um, why Eddie Kingston wanted the no disqualification match when he grabbed a bag of thumbtacks and just dumped him all over the ring and powerbombed Cody on him. And I think Cody woke up real quick and was like, yeah, I probably shouldn't have agreed to this. However, Cody eventually won with the figure four and, and kept his title. The other thing that AEW did that I was 
um, pretty impressed with and am a little excited about. And I almost hate to say that as much as I've griped about the women's division in AEW. And if you've been listening to previous episodes, you know I have been griping about AEW's women's division. But they announced that they're going to have a deadly draw tag team tournament. Yes, that is right. A deadly draw tag team tournament. Now, you're saying, what is that? And uh, when does this begin? Well, I'm going to tell you to the last one. I don't know. They didn't tell us. They just said sometime this summer. But what it is, is they're going to have 16 of the women's wrestlers are going to form in to eight different tag teams. How they're going to do that? Again, they didn't tell us. So I think that's why I'm a little intrigued. I want to know, are they going, since it says deadly draw, are they going to draw names like all that? I mean, can um, Anna Jade be put with Nala Rose? Can Shadia be put with Big Swole? Or Britt Baker? Can you imagine Shadia and Britt Baker being a tag team? How about Britt Baker and uh, Brandy Rhodes? That that would be an excellent tag team. I mean, that's why it makes it intriguing if that's you know what they're planning on doing. And, of course, the thing that I definitely was excited about, as all of you know, who have listened to the show, uh, Sammy Guevara was back last night. Um, I was really uh, glad to see him. He served his 30-day suspension, went through his counseling, and he is back and cannot wait. Absolutely can't wait for him. Um, I know that he has missed wrestling, and he is ready to show off. Now, as far as next week on AEW, I told you a little bit about what was going on next week with Raw. But on AEW, they're going to have two championship matches. Um, of course, they're going to have Cody and his open challenge, and it's supposed to be another independent wrestler. But they're also going to have the tag team titles up. They're going to have Kenny Omega and Hangman Page versus the Dark Order. And it's going to be Evil Uno and Stu Grayson. When they first announced that and they set up the Dark Order, I thought, oh, they're going to be taking on, like, number five, number eight. But, of course, no. uh, It's going to be Evil Uno and Stu Grayson. Uh, Shadia is also going to be in a match with uh, DeMonte. Um, I kind of think that's going to be a non-title since they didn't say that it would be for the title. And if you notice, um, Shadia since winning the title is 4-0. But I think only one of her matches, uh, and that would be the one against Ford, was actually up for the title. The rest have been no title matches. So I look for this to probably be no title also. Then they announced that John Moxley and Darby Allen, two of my favorites, are going to take one Brian Cage and Ricky Starks in a tornado match. I haven't heard the words tornado match since I was a kid, since I was a teenager maybe. It might have even been before I was a teenager. I don't know. Um, used to be Texas tornado matches all the time. And I am excited about this. A tornado match is when all four can be in the ring. They don't have to tag. And so you're going to have Brian Cage and Ricky Starks, you know, beating on Moxley and Darby Allen because both of them like to take punishment and pain and do the comeback and tell a story, and then eventually win, and I cannot wait. However, what I can wait on, you guys know how I feel with six-man, eight-man, ten-man tag team matches, and we're going to have a ten-man tag match, and it's going to be best friends 
and Orange Cassidy and Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus versus the Inner Circle. And, of course, that's going to consist of Chris Jericho, Sammy Guevara, Jake Hager, and then Santana and Ortiz. I noticed they're not calling um, Santana and Ortiz the proud and the powerful anymore. I don't I don't really think that that caught on. It wasn't, I don't know, I didn't think it was a good name anyway. I mean, when they'd been LAX for so long, the proud and the powerful, I don't know, it just doesn't seem to do it for you. So um, I am not looking forward to that match. Um, I I don't know. I get into the baby faces, I guess, as individual wrestlers. But you know, seeing Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus together as tag team, I don't really like them. Um, too big of a size difference, and I don't really get into that. I don't like the best friends as a tag team. So, not really going to get into that. Um, the Inner Circle is a legitimate team, a legitimate stable, and should easily kill them. But we'll see. I think they're going to continue a little bit of the Orange Cassidy, Chris Jericho storyline. And so I look for something to happen with them. But I kind of hope Sammy Guevara gets involved. I would like to see him go up against Orange Cassidy just because they're both young and high flyers. That is something that a lot of you don't know about Orange Cassidy. Um, even though he keeps his hands in his pockets a lot of the times, he is a high flyer. And he can pull off some of the move, same moves that um, Sammy Guevara can. So that is your news and updates for up to... July 22nd. So if you have any questions, comments, problems, or protests, please write me at wrestlingovertime at gmail.com or hit me up on Twitter or on our Facebook page, Wrestling Overtime. I'll be more than happy to talk to you guys. But for right now, I'm going to go back to working overtime for you, the fan, and I will be talking to you guys soon.